All right, welcome back to the show. Thank you for tuning in. All right, plenty of stuff to dive into. Sorry that I went down a little bit of a rabbit trail in the first break. Heck, Dave Elhoff took us for a little roller coaster, didn't he? What happened in the market minute? Yeah, hey, well, you know what? Don't be saying anything <sighs> bad about my man Elhoff because he and I, he, he was on Elhoff. my side last week when I was in here on your show. Oh, you guys are beating up on me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no, well, we, we, we had to instill a little truth. He's old school. Yeah, yeah. I think people are, are ready for some old school in this country. Mm-hmm. Look, I love how, the, you know, we're an amazing country. We're technologically advanced. We're the biggest economic force to ever inhibit the planet. Mm-hmm. So there's things that are going to naturally progress. I don't mean a progressive movement. I mean, progress within a, right. within a country, but sometimes things move forward so fast that you need a little old school. Mm-hmm. It's like kids do need to get spanked. Yeah. The other day, I was driving in a car the other day, and maybe kids don't. I don't know. That's probably a, a mm. rough topic. Careful. Well, man. Anyway, <laughs> but I will say this: the other day, I was driving downtown for something, and some school around here banned tag. What? Freaking banned tag! You got to be kidding me! Did you see the football player the other day? His son got a participation award, and the player made him give it back. And yeah. a, NFL football player. This is about a month ago. Yeah. I love that. I lo- That's old I love school. That too. And not only did he give the trophies back, I don't remember who it was, but he tweeted about it. Yeah. He wrote, he wrote his explanation. Why? Big deal. Because you know what? He, that man, whoever that player was, and maybe Noah can Google it for us. Steelers. S- Steelers. Uh, the, he didn't get to where he was by getting participation awards. He had to earn it. He, yeah. he earned his way into the NFL. So, you know, why? But why tag, though? What is it about the sport, the game of tag, that was so disturbing to them? It is, isn't it sad? Yeah. I mean, what what can you say? Well, I mean, who agrees with that? There's however many thousands of people out there right now listening to this show. Mm-hmm. There has got to be one or two or four or ten, I don't know, that actually agree with that. What is wrong with you as a human being right. that you do not think tag is okay? What could possibly be wrong with tag that maybe it's touching, physical? Maybe touching each other. So maybe instead we got to go to flag tag. Instead of tagging, you grab the flag. Did you just call flag tag? (laughs) Yeah, flag tag, baby. Stay with me. (laughs) Stay with me. I don't know what it is. But how are you going to grow a generation of kids to grow up and want to compete at at an auction for charity if they don't learn how to compete on the school ground? We teach kids how to play soccer by putting them in front of a TV with a joystick where they're playing with like fake animated players. I think get out there and skin your knees and fall in the dirt and get up and kick the ball around. You know, it's like. The way that kids are learning sports is on TV screens. It's scary to me. Right. Anyway. The way I learned the way that I learned sports when I was a kid was in the emergency room. It was because I had knocked holes in my head, almost bit my tongue in half. <laughs> to me, that's the way you that let's that's where we need Don't to you get miss that. those old days out yeah. in New Orleans running around? Yeah, out in the hood, out in the woods. All out those kids the- would get together and we just run and antagonize each other, go home, eat dinner, maybe yeah. chase the ice cream truck around a little bit. Like Yeah, there was no cell phones. You, you know, the you you knew to go home when the when the porch lights were turned on and where you when you heard your mama yelling your name out front and we and you'd sit out in the front and you'd breathe in the smell of the mosquito trucks going by. You know, yeah. the Could, world went, the world went south when we banned DHT, Craig, you know, mark my, my words. You know, my point is what we need Dave Elhoff. We need yeah. to go a little more old school. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Let's go back to the DHT. Well, let's talk about Donald Trump. Yeah. Or do you want to talk about the Pope? Um, well, Banner, t- talk, crying. well, you know, we can talk about the Pope because talk about needing to go old school. You know, mm. we've got, we've got a Pope coming to talk to Congress and touting the joys of socialism. It was weird. What? And then we got MSNBC and all these people who are all like separation of church and state, who are all like, you know, we can't we can't have any talk of anybody out of the Catholic Church or any Christian, anybody, anybody who knows anything about the Bible. Isn't you it know? funny how things but like hey, this make people squirm? Right. But hey, he's going to come here. And he's when cool. would MSNBC ever thought that the Pope would come and like side with them? Right. And as soon as he did, I love though, stuff but, like that. Yeah. But now they're all about, you know, the Pope. Everybody loves now. the Pope now. Yeah. Because the Pope's on board with a very scientist who, who don't believe in God. But he's, you know, he's on board. With those, with those people. It's interesting when you talk about it like that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But there's, aren't there hypocrisies in politics altogether? Well, yeah. I mean, it's one big hypocrisy. You fit in one box or the other. And I I use this example all the time. I don't, I don't give a rip. If you're gay and you want to get married, we live in a free country. We tout that. Then why would you not be allowed to get married if you're gay? Now that to me is a conflict. I am someone who believes in small government. Right. Economically speaking, right. I am conservative. I'm fiscally conservative. Mm-hmm. So if you believe in small government and you want the government out of people's lives and you claim the party of freedom, then how can a party of freedom claim who should get married? It's like, let that issue go and move on. You can say the same thing about abortion versus death penalty. There's just conflict in the way these points of view come across. And then you have a pope come in town who talks about things that are very left wing, mm-hmm. you know, very interesting the way he position things of all the things he could talk about. And 
it throws this country into a fit. Mm-hmm. And we should just be able to have a dialogue around it. Be like, good. Pope had good intention. His Pope was here. It was cool. Good event. First time in a long time. Mm-hmm. And now he's going to leave and we can get back to our bickering as usual. Right. And what I found so shocking. How do you bicker over the Pope? Well, you know, I tell you, here's how you bicker over the Pope. When you criticize something in his speech uh, that you think is too left-leaning from a social, from, from an economic standpoint, and you're called a hater and saying that you hate Catholic people and you're going to go to hell. Because that's what happened to me. It's like, I can't even point out issues that I have with him economically and politically. I'm not attacking the Catholic religion or or their belief system. I can't even point. He goes to Congress and gives a speech and I'm not even allowed to crit- critique what he said. Yeah. But from a policy standpoint, come on. I, maybe I'm just boring. He's just the Pope to me, which is great. He's Pope. To me, to me, he's just a dude. He's just a dude. I don't even care to talk about it, really. Yeah, to me, he's just a dude. So the Pope thinks we need to be nice to immigrants. Cool. Pope thinks we need better earth. Cool. All right. All right, Pope, bye. Yeah, Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, go ahead. With with all respect, let me say that very cautiously here. With all due respect to the Pope and his leadership of the Catholic Mm -hmm. Church, totally respect that. But from the political debate, the discussion, it's just like, let the Pope do his thing. Let him have his mass. Do we have to talk about it so much? I don't want to watch MSNBC and see that they agree with him. I don't want to watch Fox News and know you disagree with them. It's a Pope. Right. Pope, go back to your Vatican with your high walls where you don't allow refugees. And yeah. you're not distribu- redistributing any of your income. And we'll see you next time. It is, you town. make a great point, though. And I haven't heard it presented that way. The scientists that are behind global warming are... The ones, the ones that the Pope is defending with climate change. Right. I didn't even hear the things he said. Most of the things are very difficult for him to say. He doesn't speak great English. Right. I don't know. Right. Let's move on to the, the Trump thing. Yeah. Let's, so yeah. Andrea Kay joins me in studio with the Andrea yes. Kay Show, which you can hear on Mondays at 8 p.m. right here on KCBQ. Mm-hmm. So Donald Trump comes out in a 60 Minutes interview. Mm-hmm. T- terrible interview. Terrible interview. On whose part? His part or Pelly? Pelly. Yeah. It was an argument the whole yeah. time. So I don't know what where Pe- Pelly stands politically, but he obviously doesn't like Trump. There's a way that you can have an aggressive interview mm-hmm. that, that demands answers because right. that's your job as an interviewee. We don't want the softballs. Get some hardcore questions. Right. The whole time I watched it, I was just like, shut up. Right. Is he is he a left-leaning guy? Is there something there? Does he not like Trump? Is there, I don't know much about him. And what's so ridiculous to me is if you think you're so smart, left-leaning media, you got to realize that the attacks like that and that style of an interview is only going to make people actually jump to his side and want to defend him. You think so? Or it's going to make his supporters dig their heels in even more. I want an aggressive media. I want a media that's going to hold every elected official accountable and do real hard-hitting, ask-tough questions, investigative journalism. I want that on every presidential candidate. But don't be doing that to Trump and then turn right around and asking Hillary Clinton what it's like to be a new grandma. You know what I mean? Did he that, really do that? Well, you know, I, I'm just using that as an example. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Hillary's really been avoiding the media, and when she does get in front of the media, they don't ask her any tough questions about oh, her no, emails. Oh, no, 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 no. You the know media, what I mean? The, the, so it's like you Obama be- and Hillary have had... <laughs> Hillary had a free pass to be the next president of the United States right. if it wasn't for guys like Donald Trump coming in here and really flipping this whole political thing upside down on right. its head. Now people are talking. Now people are engaged. People are annoyed about the emails and the Benghazi right. stories. They're like, wait a second. We're kind of tired of politics as usual. And that's why Trump has all of this support. So, yeah, I mean, we, we know that about the mainstream media. They, they have given her a free pass. She could have walked in without doing anything. But because of the disruption that we've seen out of the GOP, which is leaving a vacuum mm-hmm. for one of the other candidates, I think, to ultimately fill. But then again, Trump seems to be sticking around. Uh, but bottom line, they flip things around. Now, all of a sudden, people are getting critical of Clinton. They're getting critical of Bush on the other side of the equation. Now you have this. It's a gold rush, uh, in my opinion. If you're a politician yeah. right now that's running for president of the United States, there is the opportunity to get votes now that was not there mm-hmm. because people are paying attention and, right. and the boat has been rocked. And I think that's a great thing for the United States of America. The question is who fills that void. But right. yeah, Hillary, Hillary's Hillary, right? Yeah, but I mean, it's been that case with, a, with, with the mainstream media for a long time. And you go back to the 2012 uh, debates where Candy Crowley basically, you know, oh, propped up yeah. uh, Obama. I mean, you know, that's really been... They've or been more carrying... like steamrolled Romney. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like she planted crime scene at the evidence. It's like, oh, I happen to have his speech the next day. 
let me, you know, propagate his lie. It was terrible. And that was a debate. Uh, yeah, and that was a debate. So, I mean, when you got that, but what did the Republican do, Party do in, in response? Me, if I'd been head of the party, I would have trotted every one of them out on the steps of the Capitol the next day and said, we're not going to put up with this. What went down yesterday was, you know, an abysmal attack. It was it was Pravda. We're not going to put up with it. He he did not call it terrorism afterwards. And oh, by the way, we're boycotting, boycotting CNN and we're not going to go on Candy Crowley's State of the Union. That's what I would have done. Yeah, well, I think Mitt Romney just didn't have any moxie. You know, I think that guy should have done it right there on the spot. That was oh, a problem. Absolutely. If you put, let's just say, Donald Trump in that situation, you think he's going to roll over? Oh, heck no. He don't roll over you anything. You know, uh, Chris Christie, would he roll over? No. No, I don't think so. I mean, no. so that was the problem with Mitt Romney as a candidate is he had this great resume. Mm -hmm. He's a, a gentleman. Right. Uh, he's created hundreds of thousands of jobs, paid millions mm -hmm. of taxes, given to right. charity, has a good family. Like, he's everything you pretty much are looking for, except he's a wimp. Right. He brought a spork to a knife fight. Yeah, he brought a spork. He, he brought went a spork. spork. Do people even know what a spork is? Of course they do. They eat at KFC. A spork? Our listeners know what a that spork is. That reminds me of elementary school. When a spork. <laughs> I mean, back where I'm from, we used to we used to fork people. You know, have you ever um, TP'd someone back uh, in New Orleans? No. Of course you, I did. Toilet paper. Yeah. You ever fork somebody? No. You go and you stick forks in the yard and you break the forks. It's just a pain in the butt to get the forks out of the front yard. So fork <laughs> somebody. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so Donald Trump was on 60 Minutes. By the way, yes. we got Andrea Kay here with the Andrea Kay Show. It's always good to have you on. Thank you. So Donald Trump goes on and he has this new tax plan that essentially is lowering the corporate tax rate. And he's saying that certain Americans are not going to pay zero dollars in taxes. Of right. course, I am online today getting ready for the show. And one of the top articles from Yahoo is that the math on Trump's plan doesn't add up. And I just stopped in my tracks. I'm like, I knew I knew we would start seeing that nonsense, which is right. we've penciled this thing out and it's just not going to work that way. That's such BS. The thing about Donald Trump, for better or for worse, this is what he would be good at. Right. Creating jobs, getting the economy going, creating jobs for the middle class. These are the things that Donald Trump would do very well. And you can't pencil it out. Just like you couldn't pencil out hope and change. Right. It was about a new type of leadership. Donald Trump, with all of his flaws, in this setting, in, in this discussion topic on building an economy, there is not anybody more qualified to do it than he is. And so when you start getting into these things like... Well, if he lowers the corporate tax rate, it's not going to generate enough dollars and he won't create jobs. Well, what idiot is on the other side of that editorial piece somehow thinking that they can do the math on what Donald Trump's plan would look like after a 10-minute interview on 60 Minutes? It's about a philosophy. It's about right. putting the right people in power on your team to implement these strategies. It's about a new way of thinking. And so it makes me crazy when mm -hmm. I see this stuff like it's not going to pencil out. Did hope and change pencil out? We have a $19 right. trillion dollar debt. What did you think about his plan? Well, first of all, to address it, whether or not it penciled out, who's doing the penciling? The same people who told us that Obamacare was supposed to reduce everybody's everybody's insurance costs by $2,500 a year. And it was there supposed to be the cost of a, of a cell phone bill. You know, when can we trust any numbers that have been given by anybody on the left in the Obama administration? What I, Whether or not it can work out fiscally, I actually, I agree with Grover Norquist. I think it will help create jobs. I absolutely do. What it doesn't address is two things for me. Okay. First of all, part of the problem we have in this nation right now, and Romney talked a little bit about it, but then he backed off once he got busted with the 47% comment. But when you immediately take seven... 73, 73 million people out of 300 million immediately off the tax rolls, that's not enough people with skin in the game. Part of the problem that we have is we have a mindset that's been developed and indoctrinated into our society of people um, being on the taking end. So on the I, receiving end. Everybody needs to have some skin in the game. At least if you, or if you're going to take them off the tax rolls, then they don't get to vote. Because the problem we've got is too many people taken from their fellow taxpayers and getting to vote for more of that. And any when you get to 51% of takers over the makers and we're done. Yeah. And that does not get addressed there. And when he talks Couldn't about- Couldn't agree with you more. Keep and, going. And my other point is, what he doesn't address in there, you can't talk to me about economics and dealing with a $17 trillion debt and a tax plan to, to talk about that without some details on spending cuts. Because when he talks about how he's going to- He's going to pay for his tax cuts. He gets into into vague areas of loopholes and special interest in here and here, but he doesn't get any specifics about spending. We have to address that, Craig, and we got to address it in a big way. We got to be getting rid of the Department of Education. We got to be getting rid of the EPA. We had a conservative president give us the Department of Homeland Security, and we're no safer today than we ever were before, but we got a whole lot of people on the payroll. 
increasing our seventeen trillion. Fired up debt. today, Andrea. Kay. I am, and one of the things that gets me fired <laughs> up is I am. This a, woman is fired up today. I, I am a free market, limited government gal. Oh, huh. by the way, dynamite I, in a dress. I have a degree in in business and economics and finance. I mean, this is this is a passion of mine. Andrea K from the Andrea K Show, That's eight right. p.m. That's eleven right. seventy a.m. KCBQ on Mondays. Whoo! I'll calm down now. No, I'll I take love a sip it. Of my my. My Coke here. So let me ask you this. Let me play devil's advocate here. So I agree with everything you're saying. We are becoming a, a country that is philosophically not the country that got us here. Right. We came here uh, with a free market DNA, yeah. right? With this uh, uh, wanting to expand. We, we travel this massive landscape to get to where you and I are here right. in California mm -hmm. uh, with that entrepreneurial spirit, right. right? And it is a circular economy. You got to have guys at the top that do well. You got to have them creating jobs and people that are working those jobs. It, it can all work in a circular fashion. What's happened mm -hmm. is you put more and more people on entitlements. That's an addicted society. And all of a sudden you're right. Too many of the takers, not many of the makers. You're in, you're in really big trouble. And we're seeing that happen right before mm -hmm. our very eyes. Could not agree with you more. There's policy, Andrea K. And then there's politics. Right. Okay. And when I look at Donald Trump suggesting that in, in a 60 Minutes interview and how he's going to back it up, he's got to win the election. Mm -hmm. any, any of these guys cannot implement their strategy without winning an election. Mm -hmm. And I think that our country has become so stupid at where our information comes from. We get it from social media full of misinformation. We get it from the mainstream media. We have already spent enough time talking about how polluted that is. People are not paying attention anymore. The news is this 24-7 negative, sensationalizing, cynical cycle. The people don't even want to watch the news anymore, and I can't blame them for doing it. It's not healthy. you got better things to focus your attention on. So you have this, this prism of information that is not the place to get it anymore. And my concern is that if you don't – what Donald Trump has done well, he's done a great job with creating sound bites and people are paying attention. 24 million people watching on CNN for that debate. That's because of Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. And I think if you come out and you say, I'm going to lower the corporate tax rate, for me, that is the big win to grow the economy. Right. You, you, have to, you have to get with these business owners, which Donald Trump will do a great job of, mm -hmm. you have to sit them down and say, look, we are taxing you on the highest corporate tax rate on the planet and losing trillions of dollars doing it. What is it going to take to get jobs created here? If we lower the corporate tax rate, if we incentivize you to be here and we tie that to creating jobs... He will get these business leaders to the table and he will find a way to get them reinvesting into the United States, creating jobs here. I'm very confident he'll do a good job of that. Mm -hmm. That will recreate the middle class. The median income's gone, gone underneath uh, Obama, gone down five, six grand or something mm -hmm. like that. No, it's like 55,000, 50,000 median income. We have a disappearing middle class. I almost feel like when he is suggesting that certain people not pay taxes, it is like shooting a BB off of the tank. Mm -hmm. And it's politically going to be a smart thing to say so he doesn't position himself like Romney with the 47%. Mm -hmm. And it's really going after, hey, look, we can calm some people down over here, look good hearted. This is offering a little bit over here because there's always got to be some sort of negotiation and speaking to both sides of the table. But the big win here is if we can lower the corporate tax rate, if we can get rid of the estate tax, now we're freeing up the velocity of money that is the United States of America with people who can reinvest it into creating new jobs. The people that aren't paying taxes could get better jobs that do pay taxes. I think if you could position a guy who knows us better than anyone, it's not even just Donald Trump. I think the guy's smart enough to get other people that would help fuel that fire. If there's one thing I think he would do well, I think it would be to get this thing going in a very positive way. But there's also a lot of other things I'm very concerned about Donald Trump with. Uh, geopolitical conversation, right. some of the one-liners that comes out of his mouth. I, 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 he's not my vote, uh, but I do think in that 60 Minutes interview or the philosophy on the economy, I think the guy is on the right track. I think he is on the right track. And I'll How about it. me counter-punching yeah. Andrew? Boom! Uh, I'm ready to punch back, uh, baby, because... We're kind of agreeing, though, yeah, but whatever. We, we kind it's of policy because, versus politics, right? Well, yeah, you got to win the political game, is my point. Right, but here's where, here's where the holes are in terms of political strategy from that. If the best thing that he has to offer in that plan that appeals to conservatives and, and Republicans is a lowering of the corporate tax rate, the left, from a strategy standpoint only, a political strategy 
strategy. That's really been the that's really been the headline that's come out of it that the left has picked up on to co- yeah. to foster the same narrative that Trump is a fat cat who's taking care of corporations. You know, they're leaving out the fact that it's across the board that even helps well, small businesses. Yeah, but doesn't that really make my point though that he has to do that in a sixty minutes interview that a lot of people watched? Because if he doesn't do that, the left is only going to squeeze that narrative even harder. At least he has that component of it. Hey, look, we're going to take care of the people that can't afford to take care of themselves. What about what about it? What about just a flat tax across the board? Oh, well, how about we can do a whole a different show about, about that? How about the most brilliant businessman in the world saying, you know what? Let's really make it simple. Let's really generate revenue back by lowering it, making fair across the board from everybody. That wouldn't that appeal to everybody? Wouldn't that be the big pluralist message out there to everybody? Well, that, Twelve and a half percent across the board. Get nine, rid of nine, all nine. deduction. Get get Herman rid of all Kane. deductions everywhere except charitable contributions and maybe the mortgage uh, deduction. Wouldn't that resonate when you're only hearing it? From from an Herman Cain, when you're only hearing it from a Rand Paul, it doesn't get traction. You have the most successful businessman, supposedly in many people's minds, in the history of America, who people do trust the most with economics, come out with that plan, and then then you might really get to the 65 you know, percent of Americans yep. when the IRS was caught through Lois Lerner sticking the jack boots of tyranny on the necks of Americans. 65% of Americans came back and said, let's get rid of the IRS. Now's the time to do it, Craig. And he could have been the dude to do it. I say that would have been the, the best political strategy. It it, mm-hmm, it could have been uh, if he believes in it. I believe in that. I believe that um, what you have every year is you have, they, they call it like, um, Oh, well, basically, every they're going to say that the corporations are trying to move jobs overseas to make more money and protect the fat cats. Mm-hmm. Every year, every individual, every citizen, every business, small or big, wants to reduce their tax liability. Mm-hmm. And every year, it's a tug of war between the IRS and the individual or the mm-hmm. business. And th- the smarter money tends to win that battle because they know how to structure themselves with their attorneys and their CPAs to not have to overpay in taxes by simply having good legal advice. Mm-hmm. And the people that aren't earning as much money may not necessarily be able to do that, but they are waiters and waitresses that aren't re- reporting those taxes. Mm-hmm. They're getting unemployment when they're still getting money over here. So mm-hmm. every year there's people that are taking advantage of a system that creates loopholes on all sides of the financial spectrum that you can take advantage of that need to be closed and go away. Mm-hmm. A flat tax puts a lot of CPAs out of business But it, to me, it's the only way to fix this nonsense of charitable donation over here, unemployed yet getting unemployment has a job over here, not reporting income here. You put that flat tax out there, it could change everything. But that's a whole different discussion for a whole different show. Andrea Kay, thanks for coming on. 8 p.m. Mondays, the Andrea Kay Show. We have (laughs) gone. <laughs> Where is that? We have got oh okay, I got it because we're fighting each other. Right, I feel right. like we I don't even know what just happened. I I, I blacked out. I right. blacked out. <laughs> All right, coming up next, we're gonna TKO. actually dive into what's happening in the marketplace. By the way, speaking of your tax plan, meet my tax planner. A guy I could not brag more about. His name is Doug Jennings. He helped me get my tax plan in place. It's getting to the end of the year. If you want a CPA or a tax plan or you want financial advice, remember my number one job amongst everything else on this show is to go to bat for you. And I have an all-star team who can help you on anything financially related. My website, Craig Sewing, spelled like a sewing machine, craigsewing.com. Visit that website. Read the stuff on there. You're going to see what I'm all about in helping San Diegans with their real estate, their tax plan, their financial plan. I do that better than anyone else. Craigsewing.com. When we come back, we are going to dive into the market, get into some real estate stuff with Michael Gaddis, our real estate elite out of uh, North County, back here in just a moment. Don't forget, Craig is San Diego's number one consumer advocate. If you have any real estate or financially related needs, make sure you visit Craig online at craigsewing.com. That's craigsewing.com. Visit Craig today.